Hey everybody, KMO here, wearing a hat because even though it's cloudy you can get sunburnt and boy there's not much skin on my body that's more susceptible to sunburn than that stuff right up there. I'm walking to the nearby convenience store. I'm going to buy a recreational drug. It's called alcohol. <sighs> so last week I asked Alexa to set a reminder. The reminder, supposedly, uh, will come to me, I forget the exact date, but it's in the year 2035. Is that a ridiculous thing to ask Alexa to do, to remind me of something in 2035? I, the exact text of the reminder is, remember that, ba remember that day back in 2019. Uh, what day? I don't know. I certainly won't remember in 2035, unless I have some sort of superhuman memory augmentation. But, uh, you know, in 2035, I mean, some of you watching this think that uh, human industrial civilization will be just in ruins by then, you know, a, a fond memory by a few survivors. Others think that uh, 2035 will look pretty much like today, except with, you know, faster phones and I don't know. I don't know what you think. Uh, but and other people think that by 2035, you know, we'll have colonies on Mars and such. Uh, I'm not in that group. <laughs> but I don't think that we've reached our final destination, and I don't think that uh, collapse is imminent. But somebody sent me just today a link to a long article in The Guardian. And, you know, when I see the word The Guardian, I roll my eyes because I think, oh, God, here comes some... Uh, some holier-than-thou SJW nonsense, and I was pleasantly surprised. This is actually a fairly thoroughgoing article uh, describing the struggle within a group called the Anthropocene Working Group. This is a, uh, a collection of people who are trying to take the pseudoscientific notion of the Anthropocene and hammer it into some sort of coherent notion that they could then pro they could then present, you know, to the, the larger scientific bodies which determine what the, you know, the strata in the rock are called, you know, and, and what time periods they mark out. Uh, they're going to present the idea of the Anthropocene no earlier than 2021 to, to the larger bodies. This is like um, the, anthrop the Anthropocene Working Group is like a subcommittee in Congress, you know, working out a bill, you know, been a small group of people trying to figure out what it is they want to present to the larger body for approval or not. And, uh, you know, like a question is, if the, the current era, the current, actually it's not an era, it's an epoch, if the current epoch uh, of the Holocene is over because human activity has disrupted the stability which, you know, was the defining feature of the Holocene, well, then when did the so-called Anthropocene begin? Because it's got that, that Anthropo word in there, which, you know, refers to us, us, us humans, uh, it should be that, you know, the, the time that humans have been on Earth has been, is the time marked out by the so-called Anthropocene. But no, the, the working group has decided that the mid-20th century is when the Anthropocene started, in which case it doesn't really seem like it should be named the Anthropocene. It should be named something to denote that it is industrial civilization, which is causing the, uh, the climatic change, which is so profound that uh, it will define the rock strata, you know, that future archaeologists, not archaeologists, that future geologists will look at the strata and say, oh, right here is when the Anthropocene began. Uh, you know, it's, if it doesn't coincide with the, the beginning of uh, the human era, then we shouldn't call it the Anthropocene. But, you know, that, that's a small point. Really, here is my point. 2035 seems like it's a very long way away, so far away that it seems uh, untenable to ask Alexa to give me a reminder in 2035. Either Alexa will be, you know, outmoded technology or uh, it will be, you know, a, a long forgotten feature of a now defunct technological age. Or, you know, if you don't have much, imagina much imagination and the future looks exactly like the present, well, then maybe it is entirely rational that I should ask Alexa to remind me of something in 2035. But if 2035 is a huge distance away, 
then it seems really weird to quibble about what future scientists will call layers of rock which have not yet been laid down. Future, I mean, really that's what this argument is about. What will geologists in the future call the particular rock strata that is being laid down right now? But in terms of laying down rock strata, a hundred years is nothing. It's nothing. Unless, of course, it marks a particular really earth-shaking, literally earth-shaking event, like the, the meteor impact, or perhaps it was a comet, that crashed into the Yucatan, Peten the Yucatan Peninsula and, uh, you know, brought the age of the dinosaurs to a close. Uh, that is a what geologists call a golden spike moment. You know, that is a very definite feature in the rock strata, this layer of iridium, which came from when, you know, this iridium-rich body crashed into the earth and all of this pulverized rock dust was wafted across the planet and it all settled down at about the same time. And in this thin layer, there is a lot of iridium. And so that's it's how scientists know, it's how geologists know, among other types of scientists, that uh, this great big event happened at this particular time that it had this enormous impact on the processes you know which govern how rock is laid down in you know over the future over the succeeding you know period of time so i know some people bristle when the anthropocene is called pseudoscience uh, but it is absolutely pseudoscience it is a word that is primarily used by non-scientists, primarily by people in the so-called humanities. They use it to make a particular political point, an ideological point, and it's mostly used by people who really couldn't tell you the difference between a geological era and a geological epoch. And they couldn't tell you, you know, whether epochs nest inside aeons or whether aeons nest with inside, you know, ages. Uh, they don't know anything about geology except they know that geologists should change one current term, Holocene, and instead use the term Anthropocene. That's, that is the definition of pseudoscience. Non-scientists using words, making up words that sound scientific and using them to make themselves sound as if they know something about science and give their non-scientific ideological positions the imprimatur the, you know, the authority of science. That's pseudoscience. Right now, the whole notion of the Anthropocene is pseudoscientific. There is a small group of, granted, scientists working to try to reformulate this pseudoscientific notion into something which has some measure of scientific rigor, and then they will present this to larger scientific bodies for an up or down vote sometime in the future, no earlier than 2021. And <laughs> I think I've said this a couple times now, my point is, my point is that time is weird. 2035 seems like a very long time from now in terms of the progression of technology and culture. In terms of geology, there is no difference between now and 2035. That layer of rock has not yet been laid down. It is just right now, it's living organic matter for the most part, you know, which in the future will become part of sentiment, sediment and uh, will eventually be a rock layer, but it isn't yet. And rock layers and epochs and eras and ages, I mean, these are formulated when scientists look at existing rock strata. And yet non-scientists now are telling scientists what scientists in the future should call layers of rock which haven't yet been laid down. It just seems absurd to me. Absurd. But, and this is, I guess, not my main point, but a good closing point. Should the scientific bodies, and uh, there's two of them and I can't even reproduce their names from memory, but should they adopt the Anthropocene nomenclature, I will too, because then it will actually be genuine scientific nomenclature. But for now, it remains pseudoscience.